You're listening to the Zero to Somewhere podcast with Nick Palmashano, Albert Zoe. Here we are. First week back Thanksgiving break. Well, we took a break. Yeah. Some of our clients didn't take a break. I'm yeah. sorry. Hey, listen, in, in marketing, marketers get a bad rap for not working on the holidays when we, everyone else is grinding. We work a lot. We work a lot, but we did not work on Thanksgiving, which is something Nick is actually quite excited about. This is a man who has worked every Thanksgiving for the last, what, for 15 years? It's been a long time. Yeah. So it was kind of nice. It was super nice. Yeah. I uh, And I didn't even work on any side projects on Thanksgiving. I purposefully did nothing other than eat. Yeah. So let's break it down a little bit. You know, for our business, we're still in the busy season. We got Diesel Jacks taking care of clients left and yep. right. Um, probably a good thing to talk about was, you know, we had some new hires start, but probably a good thing to talk about is something we noticed. This is at a macro level. If you're not paying attention, you've probably noticed it. You've looked at your stock portfolio. Don't look right now. It is down. <laughs> it's down a lot. <laughs> it's, it's down. We saw some interesting stats. Black Friday sales estimated down 21%. 21%. That is so, in, in that's my... That's in totality. That's across all industries. Black Friday sales down 21%. Yeah. We definitely have some customers that had awesome Black Fridays. We had some that were less than stellar. Mm-hmm. Um, people are nervous. And this is where I think one of the differences between being at Diesel Jack and other agencies is like, we kind of have to talk to our clients through like, did the marketing fail? Well, it's like, well we're in an interesting time right now. Yeah. So we're going to have to take more at bats. That's always been our philosophy, Nick. Talk about that because you've sold products in up markets Mm -hmm. and you've also tried to run Ranger Up, I believe, during the 2008 recession. Yeah, that's uh, that's right (laughs) about the time Ranger Up really started. And uh, Terrible idea. (laughs) I jumped all into RU, you know, quit the the corporate gig basically in a down economy, uh, which is exactly the same thing that we did with Diesel Jack. So yeah. we like to start things when everybody else. Well, is the economy not. was fine when we started. It's the pandemic was not known to be a problem yet. That's true. It That's wouldn't true. be until a couple like uh, a month and a half later where they told everyone no more flying. My favorite thing about Diesel Jack is that the cutoff for PPP loans was literally the day before our founding. The day, like if we had started the company one day earlier we would have been eligible for PPP loans and we could have had the free, the free money Payroll train relief. that everybody, everybody got. And uh, we didn't get that, but like the Los Angeles Lakers, but I feel like, I feel like we're stronger because of that, Albert, don't you? No, I, I, I don't know. You'd that. rather, you're telling me you'd rather have the, the few hundred thousand dollars. Well, our payroll wasn't quite that high. It wasn't that high then. It, yeah. it was only two and a half. You could only borrow two and a half well, at the time, they told you you could borrow two and a half x your payroll yeah. expenses. Yeah. So it would have been like sixty grand for us. No, it would. It would have been a little. Well, it doesn't matter. Arbitrary. So you're <laughs> saying you would have you would have wanted to have sixty grand instead of yeah. like a feeling of goodness. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That you earned it. Hundred percent. I would have enjoyed that, especially since it is just your tax dollars to begin with. Remember all those good years that you had where you paid a little extra to Uncle Sam. I mean, literally every every freaking year. So that you could. Take yeah. participate in relief programs as yeah. they were available? Yes. You didn't get to participate. I didn't get to participate. But I'm glad I paid into it so that <laughs> some people could. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a it's a it's a different time, right? Yep. Last year people are looking year over year sales. And you know, you're the probably the best person to talk about this because on a year over year basis, if Black Friday sales are down twenty one percent, it feels like things aren't going well. Yeah. But that- what would you say to someone who's, who's thinking that like maybe starting to sway and their mindset starting to sway like, oh man, we're not doing as good because last year was better. Yeah, I think you can't look at the last couple of years as normal. I mean, I, I will say that the entire time that I have been in business, I don't remember a down Black Friday. I don't think I don't think Black Friday has gone down as a collective one time in the last 15 or 16 years. But this was for online sales. This is for, this is for yeah. online sales. Online sales. Um, but last year we were all trapped in our homes. Yep. We were living a digital existence. Yep. Black Friday was a huge. It was like something to do. You you weren't going out, so you know you were only spending money in your house. Black Friday was a was a bigger online event. This year the trend is people are buying experiences. They're buying travel. They want to get out of the house because they've just been trapped. Um, 
and also there is a huge push across America right now that like everyone kind of has enough. Like I've yeah. had this conversation like 14 times, uh, you know, this holiday season already. And people are like, man, I don't really want anything for Christmas or, you know, I just want to like enjoy life. Um, and that's me every year. And I know you're the same way. Like, I don't need anything. If I want it, I'll buy it. Like, uh, but uh, well, we definitely I, I mean, I'll tell you in our household, we actually changed the rules of gifting uh, because grandma, uh, probably similar to many grandmas out there, they love buying gifts for the grandkids. Right. And yeah. so we told them it has to be a ticket. It just has to be. So they're like, what do you mean? It's like, it's got to be a ticket. We only accept tickets in this house. So you got to buy a ticket. So they're like, what do you mean? Like you, to a game? I was like, yeah. To a circus? Yeah. Mm. Ice, ice show? Yeah. Comedy show? Yeah. All, it's got to be a ticket. It's got to be an experience. You got it. It's got to be. That's, that's a cool idea. That's a cool idea. It's like we only accept tickets. And they're like, mm. but I want to buy them, you know, six iPads. I'm like, listen, they already, they already have, they the, have bus. the stuff. They, they don't have, need an they iPad. Have the stuff. Yeah. So that's where their money. Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you that in our household, their money has shifted. That was not an option last year. Mm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but, I, you know, so I, I think that if you own a business, you shouldn't be freaking out because Black Friday was down because I just I think there were superhuman events involved. And also, you know, essentially the market crashed, you know, right before the day before Black Friday. <laughs> they the announced Omicron on Black Friday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, there's, hey, there's a new hey, virus. There's there's a. <laughs> There's a virus coming out that sounds like a Decepticon. Uh, you know, <laughs> the market crashed, then the crypto market crashed, you know. And so I just think people weren't in the mood to spend. And then college coaches were getting fired left and right. Yeah, I, I, don't, mean, think people, yeah. I don't think people care about that. I don't think that affected Black Friday. No, it didn't. You know. All right. But yeah, yeah. And we have a, you know, back to, back to closing out, you know, our week. We have another uh, new graphic designer. Yeah, our new graphic designer. We hired she. We hired her actually. Well, we gave her an offer at the beginning of the month, but she actually said she couldn't even start to the end. Which a lot of times for talented people, it it happens. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, got a new graphic I, I designer. I think she stayed on to her old role because she wanted to make sure they had enough time. It's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yeah. It's a good sign. Mm -hmm. All right. So our new hire started. I only call her by her last name. See, I always She's got want, a great last her name. Her first name is Julia. Yeah. And her last name is Quigley. This is an awesome name. But whenever Julia Quigley. But whenever I say Quigley, I immediately think of the movie Quigley Down Under. And like Tom Selleck pops in my hand. But then never seen that. It's it's uh <laughs> it's it's definitely a movie. Yeah. And then uh but when I say Julia, I think Julia Gulia. From what? From Adam Sandler. Ah, I don't so, remember that. Yeah, either. so Julia I mean Gulia. like no matter which way I come at it. Is that from? She gives me a, a like a movie. The movie where he's got a son. I think Julia Gulia was that Wedding Singer. I think it's Wedding. Singer. I think it's Wedding, oh, wedding Singer. Singer. I, wedding I don't singer even know what. I don't know my Adam Sandler yeah. lore. Yeah. But we have so he. She, yeah, no, she, it is Wedding Singer because her name, the character's name is Julia, and she's about to marry a dude whose last name is Gulia, <laughs> and he's like Julia Gulia. That's funny. And she's like, why is that funny? He's like, no reason, you know, like just, yeah. So, all right. so we got Julia. She's with us now. Jake started before Thanksgiving. Yeah. We, which by the way, I've already noticed our graphic design team. I mean, of course the output is greater because we have more people, but I'm kind of liking the fact that people, it's, it's a little bit of like personal competition, a little personal pride is starting to happen. People are upping their design quality because Albert, Albert likes to have people compete against each other. <laughs> I, I am not inclined to do that, but Albert straight up told Jake that he's going to pit him against people. And Jake was like, I always win. And then I, for an entire week, made fun of him for saying that he always wins. I'm like, hey, did you win today, Jake? And, you know, like, <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, well, that's over. He's cranking. Everyone's cranking. Everyone's feeling pretty cranking. good. And with that, you know, let's talk about somebody that is uh, that is cranking right now in their own right. That's right. We have with us. Well, I'll let you introduce yourself. Kate, let, let's let's talk about the product. It's something that I do not use. Not gonna lie, but I'm trusting it's got great quality. Do you not shave ever? I don't need to shave. You don't need. To. What do you mean you don't need? To <laughs> I shave? mean, I don't need. I don't need a nice kit. I mean, if you were hairy like you, maybe not, you would I'm need not a nice hairy. I'm like a hairless cream, Italian. Nice we just razor. talked about this. Listen, I wasn't listening to what you were saying. Travis Arnold, Kason Shaving Company. <laughs> Look at this beauty. Safety razor. It's like 
What Travis? It's a, it's a return to old school shaving. Yeah. That's what it is. I thought this stuff was just to kill people in movies, but no, you actually can <laughs> shave with it. Travis, welcome to, to the show. I, I have not opened it yet. Is this a brush or is this some kind of like a butter? Because don't you don't you? No, call that's that's uh, that's one of the uh, the synthetic brushes, and it's in a in a travel tube. So how do I can, how do I can, get it out of this tube? Just uh, raw. One end, one end's got a cap, so just twist and pull. Use your ranger muscles. I'm trying here. Listen, this, this is like moving. watching. This is like watching a, a monkey learn something for the here, first time. You, you open this. I've don't. literally never seen a razor like this. I don't here, know what I'm doing. See if you can open it. <laughs> I don't want to break it. We're gonna, but you can't exclude Asians from the market. Oh, and then I'm here's, sorry. and here is the shaving soap. Is this a twist eye? That's what I said. I like. No, I'm it's like, it's it, it, it's it's a slip on. So I mean, you just have to literally pull it off. Oh, okay. Well, maybe maybe. We'll have to edit. I don't know. This I, so feel, I feel. I we'll like... have to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta edit this. Hey, I, I, I did some editing, you, man. I, I didn't super glue that one. <laughs> all right, all right. So, is this? Did you did you clown me? You sent me a super glued one. <laughs> oh. No, I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's like I said, Ranger muscles. Come on. Like Travis is gonna be like, yo, watch this asshole try to open. So it. anyway, I, <laughs> I met I met Travis through Warrior Rising. So yeah. Travis won the. Uh, uh, the Warrior Rising uh, business shower. He had to go up against 12 other entrepreneurs, yeah. or 11 other, he's the 12th, uh, you know, with a, a bunch of, you know, high end successful business owners. Tom knocked it out. Yeah. Tom did it with a knife. All right. <laughs> that done, he had to use tools. Uh, this is cool. So here's, oh, that's a nice brush. Oh, this is like what people, like in the- Yeah, this uh, is an oldie time. Oh, yeah, you, you, you- Yeah, am I going to injure you, myself? Yeah, you're yeah. definitely going to injure yourself. You 100% <laughs> are going to injure yourself. Um, Has anybody ever died on a podcast? I'm sure. I'm sure it's happened at least- You can't- At least seven times. I mean, I'm not going to put this thing near my neck. I'm going to do it. Oh, jeez. I'm going for it. What if you just bleed out from your thumb? <laughs> that would be a serious gash of, of epic proportions. So Travis. Travis wins yeah. this business shower, does a great job, and gets supported by Warrior Rising. And, uh, you know, you always wonder what's going to happen to people after they leave these kinds of events. Are you shaving like <laughs> dry right now? I just did, yeah. <laughs> by the way, that was my razor, you know? Well, you, you, there's more. There's, and the blades are interchangeable. And uh, Travis has been on a tear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this uh, this stuff is going to land in the uh, in AFES, the the Army and Air Force Exchange. Um, he's working all kinds of deals. His sales are way up, and so you know, anxious to hear you know how you did it. Yeah. So so let's just start right out of the gate because you're brand new, but you're cranking. So how how did you get started? Where are you? How did you get to this point? Very, very similar situation, right? When COVID started is when I started the business. Um, I you know, still working full time, um, you know, with, with my full time career. You know, I started working from home, had more time, you know, I just was a little bit more efficient just working from home. And so my, my brain just started turning and I, you know, I tried multiple different, you know, entrepreneurial ventures, you know, I, uh, did graphic design, website design. I tried, you know, making T-shirts before, but God knows we don't need another better-known T-shirt company. <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I wanted to find, <laughs> I wanted to find my own my own niche. What something, you know, what value I could bring to the market. And I was, you know, showering that day, and I just started thinking back. I'm like, you know, I, if you're going to sell a product, you know, find something that you've got a personal testament to, something that you know you know. Um, you know, it would bring value to your own life and, you know, what pain, what problem could you fix, you know, by, by selling that product. And just thinking back to the time in the military and I'm like, I, I hate shaving. Um, you know, I got out of the military and I grew an epic Viking beard, um, <laughs> you know, cause I never wanted to shave ever again. Um, and that's when I started thinking, I'm like, okay, if I hated shaving that much and I know it's an ongoing joke and, you know, there's memes about uh, shaving in the military and, you know, when is the Sergeant Major finally going to allow beards, et cetera. Um, maybe this is the, the problem that I want to look at addressing. 
uh, that that train of thought rolled into you know just kind of reminiscing about some of the older times watching you know classic tv shows you know when andy griffith would go into the barber shop and he would get kicked back in the barber chair and he'd get the hot steam towel and mm -hmm. you know it was like a a, a pampering experience i'm like well, that's it um you know I'd, I'd always been familiar with safety razors i i'd always liked the safety razor shape versus um a plastic disposable razor sure um so that's where i kind of kicked off the idea and it, it had just started first initially with some different types of shaving soap you know an actual product that our soldiers could bring out into the field and uh, get a little bit more of a comfortable shave with um you know, it was a good idea it, i mean it was a, a nice side hobby to start things off for the first couple months until that business shower event and that's i think definitely a, a big catalyst for where my my sales started to explode so let's walk back a little bit so you're starting with uh soaps and creams is that what you're saying did you know how to make that or did you look it up or did you already have a family recipe like how'd you get going with that or do you come uh, from a family of soap makers no, I definitely do not. I, I do come from northern Wisconsin out on the farm. So and cheese makers. Things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it was a, a lot of research went into it. Um, you know, looking online, how to make soaps, what are the different processes of making soaps? And what I wanted to figure out is how could I formulate this where somebody could bring this out into the field and not have to worry about it leaking or exploding or spoiling because of you know the austere environment uh because is it I, true I that the secret ingredient is whale fat well, i was going to make a navy joke about it but yeah let's <laughs> let's stick with that um yeah so it's uh i mean just doing some research and you know i came across some some melt and pour recipes that you know would, would allow that soap that you know if it was in 130 degrees out at uh, MTC, yeah, it, it might melt, but it's not going to ruin the soap. Mm. Um, you know, if you're in negative 30 degrees up in Fort Rainwright, you're going to be just as fine. Uh, so it was a, a good formula with it. Started working on uh, getting that fine tuned. And from there, it was beta testing. You know, it was me lathering up my face, chasing the kids around, making them, you know, wear this on their face to see if they had any allergic reactions, giving them <laughs> samples to, you know, all, all my friends and family. And the the feedback was great. So that's kind of where it started. How so, many like formulations did you go through before you landed on something that you're like, okay, this, this will work. But a dozen. Dozen. That's not too yeah. bad. Yeah. That's not too um, bad. And, 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 and that's, you know, my, my wife was really supportive with it. Um, you know, I, I, I bootstrapped everything. Um, you know, I didn't take out any loans. I didn't, um, you know, I, I'm not in debt for anything with this. And I told her, I'm like, oh, give it I'm time. Take about <laughs> uh, say again? Give it time. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, <laughs> we're about to get to that right now. Um, but yeah, and I took about a thousand dollars out of savings and I bought, you know, a bunch of different oils and fats and melt and pour bases and fragrances and, um, you know, different additives with it. Um, so that, that initial investment was enough to make that first, uh, you know, dozen or so different recipes, as well as once I kind of dialed that in that first batch of soap that I, I ended up selling and they sold out really quick. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm surprised, like just, you know, I'm, I'm not saying there, there's anything bad about your product because it's a great product. Like you can just tell everything is, is so not like this. This is a meaty razor. Yeah, even the stand, has you know, weight. like holding the brush. Yeah, the stand is nice. Like everything is nice. But I'm, I'm very surprised that there has been such demand for it because, you know, I remember the days of like not not this because, you know, this it's been a while since this was popular, but I, I definitely remember the days where it was just like when you bought a Gillette razor, it had one blade, you mm -hmm. know, and, now it's got and, 37 and blades. then like the double blades came out and that was game changing. And then they were like triple. And I was like, all right, you know, this is marginally better than two. And then now, now it's like 47 blades, you know, like, you know, in a lube strip in a world where you have skin. <laughs> One you know, 47-blade system will shave it all. 
with every blade that they added though you know i think people started to realize that you know you could have 100 blades on it and it's still not going to give you any better of a quality of shave uh, the shaving was still a chore it still sucks um, and it got uh, more and more expensive as it went along you know you you got you know you walk into the the, the aisle you know the the hygiene aisle at, the, at target or whatever you're at and they usually will have your razor blades under lock and key because people yeah. are stealing them because they're so damn expensive i think the replacement heads work out to about like three to four dollars oh yeah yeah they're, they're quite expensive yeah i think it's actually i usually just buy a whole new system because i think i did the math <laughs> And it's cheaper to just buy like and you know the entire system with two blades than it is to buy like the three blades. <laughs> well, I'm like, yeah, you know, I only shave. So I, I, I think that's know? that's where a lot of the the attraction had came from is you know you, um, it's a little bit higher of an upfront cost, um, you know, with the the kit that you got there that would typically retail for eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but that's got an entire year's worth of supplies. Oh, okay. Um, you know, even a in a subsequent year, when you need more blades, you can get a hundred pack of blades for about 15 bucks. So, you know, that's that's going to last you a long time uh, for, so, for next so, to nothing. But let me ask you the question. Is that good for you? Because, I mean, the, the you know, Gillette makes all this money because they're charging, you know, a thousand dollars for three pieces of plastic, you know? <laughs> Exactly. And, and I never will be Gillette. I don't want to be Gillette or Schick or any of these major companies with it. But there are a couple of specialty companies like myself that have done extremely well. Um, I'm, I'm looking at like art of shaving type of a situation with it. Mm -hmm. But I, that's definitely not something that would be accessible to our soldiers. I mean, a, a shaving brush that, you know, they're going to sell in their stores is about one hundred and fifty dollars for the damn brush. Well, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm going to make a equally quality product, um, and and it's me working on all of this. Get it direct to the consumer with it, um, or now you know even with a, a direct with Athes, um, who's uh, a, a not for profit type of a company. Yeah. Um, you know they can still keep the margins really low and make this affordable for our troops. What about for somebody like me that will only use a brush made out of rhino horn? What can you do for me? I, I uh, prep shut a rhinos. <laughs> you threw him off, man. I know. <laughs> he was, my main man was flowing about was business, flowing. and you're I'm talking sorry. about I'm rhinos. Sorry. Like you threw an I'm endangered sorry. animal on I'm him. He's sorry. like, he's dang. Like, I know. I, I want it. He's like, I do not use rhino horn in my brushes. <laughs> <He didn't. laughs> I, only I want everyone to know, K Sun Shaving does not use rhino horn. They use dragon. Every, horn. All, Whatever all dragon rumors you've heard, synthetic. dragons. Dragons what, are cool as fuck. Whatever rumors you've heard, they do not use rhino horn or whale blubber in any of their products. Maybe ostrich, but definitely dragons. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely dragons. Dragon talon and horn is yeah. what the product's made out yep. of. So you, you started with the shaving, the creams and butters. What made you go into the tooling cause, um, or machining of your actual razor, your brush, like all of these things? Because as someone who has made or ordered manufacturers to make something for me, it's a painful process. It never comes right. out the right way. Right. Um, so half of it, I'm, I'm contract manufacturing with it. Um, the other half, I'm, I'm doing myself with it. And, you know, as I continue to to grow it, that I'm going to be readjusting that just to, to, to grow with the demand with it. But, yeah, for some of the overseas sourced items with it, it, it is an absolute pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it ended up coming to uh, the progression of things is, you know, I, I created the soaps and, you know, you you don't need a brush with the soaps. I mean, you could lather with your hand and you're going to get enough to, you know, if you're in some field environment where you want to get something on your face before you scrape off those hairs that's matted up with your face paint and camouflage, it'll work, but it's best to use a brush. And so that was kind of that natural next step was, you know, I've got these soaps. Now I needed to get a brush within my inventory with it. Um, that then about that time, um, there was some, some political drama with some of the other uh, shaving companies out there. And so I had a lot of people starting to reach out, being that I am a veteran-owned business, mm -hmm. um, they expressed interest to, to do business with a, a veteran-owned business instead of, you know, a company that went woke, per se. Interesting. So the give us an idea of how hard it was for you to get this made for you properly. Uh, I've heard, so like, 
I, I, I've told the story before on previous episodes that it cost me 5,000 bucks to get my first run of dog toys from China. So it was like, you know, not the end of the world money, but enough money to make you feel like, dude, do I really want to do this? That's, you know, when I talked earlier about the catalyst of that business shower, um, that's exactly where that all perfectly lined up with it. Um, you know, I, I won that business shower. I received uh, the grant from Warrior Rising. And that was the capital that I needed to, to push forward with that, you know, to meet those first MOQs. Because, yes, I mean, overseas, um, the prices are great, but they're always going to stick you with an insane MOQ. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so I was able to to finally hit those order quantities with it to, to get that first batch done. What did it feel like for you when you when those products arrived in the United States? Um, I'm a big guy and I tried to do a backflip. And um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it was it was a unreal feeling with it because I mean it's almost like you're watching your baby being born at that point. You know, you're walking out and, you know, it's not necessarily a bassinet with a crying baby in it, but you've got but your No, it's a razor and that's your... also beautiful, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Comparing your razor to a baby. Yeah. It's like, the, it's like giving birth to a baby made of metal and sharp objects. You know, so one of the things that you did do successfully to get the capital was to win that Warrior Rising competition. Now, this is something a lot of entrepreneurs are faced with. And, you know, I'd love for you to kind of share your story of how you got it done, you know, because in a, during a pitch competition, people want to hear very specific things or investors want to hear their specific things. It's always difficult for an entrepreneur that wants to go in front of a bunch of you know, check signers to be like, hey, I need to tell them X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I want them to fund my business. Of course, everyone's doing that. And you're going against 12 other people that are, that are doing the exact same thing you're doing. What do you think about your story or your numbers got you a leg up for them to say like, hey, I, I'm going to back this one because I think this one's going to work out? Just as I'm, I'm trying to build a company and build a brand and sell products, uh, you, you need to take that same philosophy into that pitch. You know, you're you're creating your your image right off of there. And I told my backstory about it. You know, where I came from, what I was doing, and and the build up to why I wanted to create this company. Um, so talking about how much I hated shaving, you know, created a personal aspect to it. Um, and, you know, as that further progressed and I started talking about uh, where it started and how things have progressed with it. And finally, uh, you know, kind of wrapping up that pitch of this is what I'm going to do with that money, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think was good. I mean, it's I, I know it's difficult for some people to, you know, maybe cast their pride aside and, um, you know, just get down to the brass tacks of things. But I said, listen, I mean, this twenty thousand dollar grant this is a penny by penny breakdown of where it's going to go. Um, this is going to allow me to do X, Y, and Z. And this is where I think the projections are going to hit. And, uh, you know, I, I was looking, this was the beginning of uh, 2021. Um, it was March, I think, when the pitch competition yeah. was. And, you know, at that time, I was doing maybe 700 to to $1,000 a month in revenue. And I said, you know, I, I think I can take this and you know, I can turn that $20,000 into $100,000. And I'm well, well above trajectory on that. That's what I'm talking um, about. For, for, awesome. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I like that because uh, as much as people want to, um, I think people over romanticize what a pitch is. Yes. You know, it's, it's yes. equally your story, but it's also the conference that you can actually execute what you're talking about. Yeah. You cannot convey that without numbers. And whether it's and, achievable, because I, I've now been to, I don't know four of these pitch competitions and you know there are there are a lot of smart people in the room in these things and and yeah. uh, you you had some you had some stiff competition some of the ideas that people have are great ideas but then it becomes like yeah can they execute this are and they the ones to do it are, are they the ones to do it is this an executable idea and does 20K give that person a shot of executing this idea? And people yeah. come in there with these, like, I'm going to change the world concepts. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, and I like, uh, you know, I hope everyone succeeds. Uh, but I think the thing that you did really well is, you know, you didn't try to forecast the future of your company, you know, five years, 10 years from now, like, hey, I'm going to be this multi-billion dollar organization. You were like, 
I short can, term. I can get from step A to step B, which will allow X, Y, and Z with this 20 grand. And everybody believed it. Everyone was like, yes, this plan actually makes sense based on what I know. And, and, and I, I think the, the, uh, the, the crowning achievement about that was the execution with it. Um, I got invited back in June to the, the Napa event. And, you know, at that point, my, my sales had increased, uh, I 5X'd at that point. Mm. Um, and, you know, so it was a, a huge increase in sales. You know, I, my inventory had gone from, you know, I'd have a couple hundred dollars worth of product on hand to now, I'm, you know, I, I'm running, you know, in, in the five, you know, upper five figures of inventory on hand. And, you know, it was that, that progression with it and being able to actually report back and say, um, you know, yes, Warrior Rising helped me. And, you know, this is an absolute success story. Um, and, you know, I think it's a, it's a great way to highlight their program and um, help to kind of solidify their, their message to, you know, their, their donors and the people that support them. Yeah, for sure. You're, you're a huge success story for Warrior Rising, um, which, which is a great organization. You know, they, they're, they, they've helped a lot of people and it's, it's super cool to watch guys like you take it to the next level. So with that in mind, what is the next level? You know, you've got, you've got 10, 20 grand of inventory sitting around. Where got you, the AP's where, contract. Where, where are you going? That's the, that's exactly where I'm going with it. So, uh, rewind maybe two months ago. Um, I was at a conference in, that's me I was at a conference in New Mexico. And, hey, do we have uh, a I rewind? Hold on, hold on. Do we have a rewind sound? How about a laugh track? <laughs> you love it. You love it. All right. You ruined Travis. So, yeah, the, the, I, I, keep ruining Tra I keep ruining <laughs> Travis's thought process. You know, he gets going and then I stop it with something dumb. So uh, two months ago, I was at a conference in New Mexico and I, and I saw a unicorn, uh, a retired sergeant. An actual major unicorn? Oh, OK. All right. Well, yeah, <laughs> a, a retired sergeant major of the Army absolutely is a unicorn. And, uh, you know, going back to my conversation about beards earlier, I, this was an absolute seize the moment type of a situation. I saw him. And, and you took I'm him like, hostage. I, yes. Yeah. I, I ran up to him <laughs> and I'm like, Sergeant Major. I have one question to ask you is, is the army ever going to allow beards? And uh, he laughed because I'm sure he's been asked that question, you know, a hundred thousand times with it. And he said, no, I'm like, cool, because um, you know, I'm a veteran and I started a shaving company. And my intention with this is I thought that would have been the coolest customer to have. Um, you know, I've got some pretty damn cool customers already. Um, you know, especially with the connections in with Warrior Rising. Hell, I got Nick Palmashano having my uh, products in his hand right now. That's cool. That's right. But I thought, you know, retired Sergeant Major of the Army might one up that. Um, and lo and behold, he had I don't, some I don't see how. Well, he had some connections in with the uh, C-level staff at Avies. And uh, that's how that definitely won up, uh, you know, Nick Palmashano. <laughs> you've done nothing. So, it's just it's just all numbers to you, isn't it? Travis? You've done nothing. You've done. You've literally done nothing. Now. I inspired him with my speech. <laughs> you are losers. <laughs> I did um, call everyone a loser at that event, but you were wrong. Because Travis. Ex no, I didn't call Travis a loser. Travis was the only <laughs> no, winner. Every, everybody else. You, that you, was you held me in. You that held me like, in your arms and looked at the rest of the crowd and said, you were all losers. <laughs> How does it feel to <laughs> lose to this guy? <laughs> it, 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 it's just, it's, it's natural. I mean, I was artillery, king of battle, you know, that's, yeah. that's just how it is. Yeah, there you go. Um, but anyways, so yeah, I got the, uh, the, the meetings in with the buyers at EVs, uh, the presentation. I mean, it was a pitch once again. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, establishing my brand and the value that I would bring not only to AVs, but more importantly, their customers. Um, and they they were thrilled with it. And right off the bat, they're like, yeah, we're, we, we want to go ahead with this. And uh, we'd like to see you rolled out into 120 stores to start off with. So what's that mean? 120 stores. How many pieces do you have to provide to, to roll out to 120 stores? I'm just getting my initial um, uh, processes done. I just uh, got about 500,000 razor blades. 
uh, 25,000 cans of shaving soap, Man, um, you know, yeah, thousands of razors and brushes and everything. So, I mean, it's, it you going to do regular product. soap or are you going to stay shaving? Um, I don't know yet. Um, uh, it is Kison shaving company. So unless I decide to expand out of that and just make Kison, um, maybe, uh, but I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to specialize in, in what I'm doing is, is the shaving. There's other soap companies out there. There's other hygiene companies out there that I think are doing fantastic. And maybe it's something that, you know, as, as I progress, um, an acquisition happens, you know, Bravo Sierra, I'm looking at you. Um, you know, something like that very well might be in, in line. Billy, Billy razors, which is razors for women just got yeah. acquired for 310 million. Maybe we should start a razor company. I don't know anything about it. I don't either. We would be terrible pitchmen. For yeah. <laughs> I mean, we never shave, you know. Now this is we're we're not going to. I'm going to call it. Travis I'm going to call it Kaizen Er <laughs> Shaving Company. No, you because you would be listed after, so you'd be Bison. I'd call it. <laughs> so if it was I'd call it. Hey, Kaizen. <laughs> yeah, oh. We get the first listing. That's what's up. <laughs> Bam! I Googled you. No, we will not do that. But the, I don't, I so don't the, want a shaving company. So the products are, you said that you've ordered those, they're in hand and they're going to AFIs now, or they already are heading to those the shelves? The uh, the, the initial process, um, you know, and, and I was excited to hear your guys' new hires with it because it's definitely some of the, the next steps that I'm going to have to look at is, is, you know, some of my first initial hirings because I'm still at this point a one-man band with it, managing, yeah. um, you know, the direct to consumer side of things, mm -hmm. as well as uh, building up my B2B processes with it. Um, and that's been it's a challenge without a doubt. Um, things that, you know, I just, I never knew existed like an EDI system. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. They're all antiquated by the way. Good times. And if you screw up anything, we can't receive that. We can't receive this or we'll <laughs> receive it, but we're going to have to charge you a 17% receiving mm -hmm. fee. Yeah. So, uh, the, the good thing is I think I was smart enough just to, to uh, hire a company to manage all of that. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, while I am extremely computer savvy, um, that I started looking at the process for it. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not doing it, nor do I have the time. Um, yeah, it's so, a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. So, so getting something implemented that. And then even, you know, as you deal with, uh, you know, major retailers with it and you've got... Um, their processes and all of their check boxes that you have to complete in order to just, you know, get a purchase order in place. So right now I'm doing a lot of pre-ordering. Uh, so the purchase order hasn't even been landed at this point. Um, but, you know, it's, it's in preparation, you know, to get some of these longer lead time items ready to go. Mm. That's awesome. That is awesome. When it comes to hiring, we, we, my fault, I always think about like, you, there's only two reasons to hire, right? One is to get some type of force multiplier effect that you could otherwise never do. So hire a skill you absolutely do not have. The other one is re pain removal. Like in pain removal, I usually think outsource is the best way to go. If you're trying to kill off pain because it sucks so bad. So that's going to be like your accounting taxes. Um, some people buy like uh, are subscribed to like virtual assistants now because they don't want to do like a lot of the admin work. It's yep. like I think about those. It has to be one of those things never choose like a mildly nice to have like so for example like um you talked about like fulfillment getting the first person in the warehouse mm -hmm. that's what i would consider pain removal yeah right like you yeah. got to remove some pain so you can go do something yep. it's not going to force multiply your business that's right but you need to get some pain yeah there, there are employees that remove pain <clears throat> and there there are employees that scale you and they're two different things yeah but yeah. but they you know no matter what, they have to be people that are engaged in your success. One of the biggest things that I, one of the biggest mistakes I made when I was scaling Ranger up at, in the early years is I spent time um, making sure that I had like the right designers in place and that kind of thing, things that like I felt like were really important, but I didn't worry so much about who I had in the warehouse fulfilling orders and you know, doing some of the operations tasks. Like I had a main person that I trusted, but then everybody else, it was like, oh, you yeah, know, hey, my friend needs a job. And it was like, yeah, whatever, you know, we're stuffing orders. Um, it matters. 
it matters a lot. Uh, you yeah. know, you know, there was a point where, you know, I, I found, and I've talked about this in the past, there was a rounding that was happening, uh, you know, without my knowing it because, you know, employees trying to do good things, you know, um, maybe it was like, Hey, you have to order 537 shirts. Well, they rounded up to the nearest dozen because there's a break at dozens. And so, you know, why have the extra cost when you're only talking about five or six shirts? And anyway, at some point, those rounding errors uh, summed to about $88,000 of just extra inventory and like extra smalls and three XLs and just garbage that was going to unsellable, <laughs> was going to sit around forever. Um that was the impetus for the mystery shirt thing. It was like, man, we got to get rid of all these things that are just sitting around. So we're launching mystery shirts. But I mean, you need people that are that are maniacally focused on whatever their job is. And so whoever you hire first, they have to be completely focused, uh, you know, and always trying to improve at that thing, whether it's somebody stuffing shirts or, you know, somebody designing your next product. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, and, and I think you put it in a really good context for me. For me, I look at it as an operations or a, a business development side of things. So you've got the pain removal or the, the scaling side of things. You know, I, I, I handle business development pretty damn well. Um, so I, I know for sure that my first focus is going to be in the operation mm -hmm. side where, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably never going to hire an HR director, but, you know, I know that I'll just be able to get one of these uh, contracted HR companies that manages all of that, you know, manages the pay, manages all of this other stuff. But, you know, getting somebody to actually come in and, and handle those in-house operations. If, if you tasks, ever go over 50 people, you'll, you're going to need an in-house uh, HR director. <laughs> right. That's why Albert and I never want to go over 50 people ever again. <laughs> Yeah, when we get to, 40, when we get 49. to 40, 49 people, we're 49. just going to keep raising prices. I want to so, work with so you. Some, so somebody, somebody badass walks along to a diesel jack, and you're like, we need to hire him so somebody else has to go? That's yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. That's gonna, the the that's, juice isn't worth the squeeze that's of when having we, 15 That's points. when we really adopt the Reed Hastings Netflix model of, like, we are a sports team. So if you can get a better player, you should. Have you seen this before? Travis, I, I I just heard about it, and and yeah, no, I, I I know exactly what you're talking about. We just I had a conversation with a coworker just the other day um, on that same exact thing. But the um, the person, so the funny story is the the article about the person who created this program eventually was a victim of her own program because Reed Hastings one day came to you. You know how you're the best at like learning and professional development? Yeah, I got a better one. <laughs> so, so he did. He ousted her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but there's also that's like whether that's cruel or not cruel. I, don't I, know. I would say that's cruel. It's pretty savage how they do it. But that's like, savage. Can yeah. you can anyone argue with the results it's created? Netflix is a monster company. Yeah, I bet they would have been a monster company with her. Well, and and, and you can speak a lot to their adaptation to change too. You know, yeah. them going from a mail-in DVD service to you know where they're you know on the TVs of every single house mm -hmm. pretty much in America. Yeah. They you know shut down uh, major cable companies and you know they re completely changed things. So yeah, uh, efficiency and, and change is something they've done extremely well. So for your for yourself, when you think about these things, you know you have this is one of the big challenges of any scaling business. You're right there right now, which is you there have is no other place Albert wants to be. No, I don't want. I definitely don't <laughs> want to be in the stage ever again. Um, but you're at a point where you have Watching more problems than you have revenue to solve those problems, <laughs> <Mystery>. right? <laughs> which is which is your resource constraint, right? Which is what you and I have talked about for a while with Diesel Jack. It's like, yeah. what do we do? We need a couple more customers. Everyone's working like dogs. We can't hire yet. We need to land a couple more customers yeah. so we can get more people. Yep. And then those people will get tapped. Then we got to land more customers so that we can get more people. And just, yeah. it's a constant, it's never like a nice flow. It's usually like you have to make, you have to make a call. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, right. you, you either go into deficit in order to grow or... You just tell everybody to suck it up and be miserable for a few weeks or a month or whatever while you're, you know, while you essentially add business and then find people later. And there's pros and cons of both. 
No, and, and, and I, I, that's exactly how I see it. You're going to have the, the, the mountains and the, the, the valleys with your, your growth with it. You know, right now I'm at that pre, uh, pre-order phase with it where, you know, I'm buying inventory. And that means that, um, you know, for my personal expenses, I'm probably going to be eating ramen noodles for the next two months. <laughs> uh, but if that's what it's going to take to be able to, to fulfill this contract, well, then, you know, so be it, because the reward for that is obviously going to be great. Well, uh, what's, so what's your, what's what your go-to to? ramen flavor? <laughs> uh, so uh, really, it's uh, getting the, the, the chili with shrimp and adding some lime in there. Oh, wow. I mean, you go fancy. You're, you're like fancy. Yeah. I, like, I'm still well, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not to the point where, like, I drop an egg in it or anything like that. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm talking like the original, you know, the chicken, pork. The chicken or the beef. Beef, you know. <laughs> hey, don't don't sleep on pork. Pork is solid. Yeah, pork is solid. No, I'll, I'll splurge the extra five cents for those micro shrimp and the hint of chili in there. Wow. <laughs> You must be living good then. You can always sell your car. That's not real ramen. You used cars are going for a pretty penny right now, so you can always do that. Yeah. He's not, got he's got real protein in his ramen. You still back on the ramen? Yeah, I mean it's you know, I'm just talking ramen. You know I've never eaten it. You've never had ramen? I've never bought it. Excuse me. I'm, I'm gonna buy you some ramen. We'll try ramen tomorrow. I probably won't eat it. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> You will. You'll eat it. You, know, you I, always eat free food. You will eat any free food. I will eat week old sushi. <laughs> I'll eat week old sushi. If I see sushi in the fridge for a week and I say, who like, is yeah. this? How bad could it be? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm thinking back, Albert. We had a talk, I think, back in what, July. Yeah, um, yeah. I had met, uh, met up with Hollywood. and Hollywood! Uh, who, who's the guy on your team that looks like the, the Boston version of Gerard Butler? Matt Finney. There we go. I, I ran into them out in Napa mm-hmm. and uh, talking about the success. And then right afterwards, Hollywood texted me. He's like, hey, I'm going to introduce you to this guy, Albert. And, and we had that call uh, back in July, I think. And you know, yeah. we were kind of talking about getting Diesel Jack on board with it. And you know, while things were going really, really good then, it was just like, you know, while I need you, I can't afford you. So yeah. it's going to be interesting now that, you know, once, you know, that tipping what, what point did Albert, happens. Did Albert it, tell you not to go with us? No, oh, hell no. No, he did a, he did a <laughs> hell of a job with it. And, you know, he's, he, he definitely created the value with it. But when I started adding up the numbers, I mean, I'm, I'm not a mathematician, but I knew that um, what my X was did not equal what your Y was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, right now, no. But uh, after I get to finally invoice APs for that first order, uh, we're making a commercial voice. There we go. Sweet. There we go. Looking forward to it. We got. We got to get like a maybe rate. some cheering. Where are you're not even trying today. Listen, you're not even. Trying. I, I'm imagining. By the way, here's my pitch. Here's my pitch, Travis. This is the why Nick has me because <laughs> for those that have not met Nick, he's. He kind of stumbles and bumbles on the fly. Like if you hit him up with something, like he can't, he can't come up with ideas on the fly. He just kind of fills in That's the words. That's not true. You know, you know, you know. That's not Here's true. my pitch. That's fundamentally not true. Give him a pitch right now. Pitch your commercial. All right, guys. Like, oh, you know, this this straight razor is great. You know, like I, I want to try this. He starts shaving and he's having a good time. And then, like, just blood just starts pouring out of his <laughs> neck. Like, oh god, oh god. Shh. There's blood everywhere, and it spells Kaizen. <laughs> so sharp, you might kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> that there's, might not work. There's my pitch. That might not work. Because here's mine. You get you your get pitch this, sucks. You, <laughs> <laughs> you get this old, grizzled, ugly guy. So Hollywood is going to be our guy. Full beard. It's all. Starts ra- shaving. It's going to be no words. Just turns, and he turns into Tom Hunt. He just keeps... Well, no. Someone good <laughs> He looking. turns into a small baby. He's got to get progressively better looking. Like we get a bunch of male models, and like one by one, like it just keeps coming, it keeps going and going and going. Yeah. That's it. Kai's on And at the end, it's Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Is he still considered a sex symbol? Yeah, he's still considered a sex symbol. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Girls he's, like he's, Ryan Reynolds. He's older now. I don't know. Yeah, see, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse pitch this one to you guys, so you guys can see this. I'm thinking, middle of Fallujah. 
you know, indirect fire. Do going we actually off have to go to Fallujah or so can, we, can we Hollywood this? <laughs> I'll tell you no, right now, it's expensive. That. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to go back. Um, <laughs> but IDF going on and the scene focuses in on a barber shop, you know, barber chair right in the middle of the city. Of the, of the battlefield? On, yeah. Kick back yeah. on that barber chair is Ryan Reynolds with a full beard. But yeah, the full yeah. tier one operator drab, you know, he's got the the high this, speed this, helmet. This sounds cheap so far. I like it. You know, next to him is uh, smoking hot. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, Albert a model Cho- Albert So. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Giving him a good barbershop quality shave with it, and just at that time, you know, a, a mortar lands a little bit too close. And uh, that poor infantryman was awoken from the foxhole and realizes that uh, you know, he's he's not in that. Scene. He's actually shaving himself, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Because it's because like it's such a comfortable shave. Oh, I like that. So I like it. I like it. I'm the, glad I thought of it. The only, on the fly, Albert. The only challenge. On the fucking fly. He didn't come up with that on the fly. I just did. Huh? <laughs> You know, uh, <laughs> the only problem with that one is it's expensive. You got a lot of things happening. The more right. things that are every time there's a thing on the screen, just imagine that. Thing well, the, the, the Ryan Reynolds already made this impossible. Yeah, no, but, no, no. Uh, Ryan Reynolds does things for equity. Yeah, maybe maybe he becomes your equity partner. Yeah, he he I likes mean, what owning things. What he's done okay. to aviation gin so far, I mean that. He's made six hundred million on that. <laughs> All right, it's a guy. Good problem to have. It's a guy wearing like artist's makeup and a beret, and you see him like moving his hand, and uh, like then it pull. You see that he, it's actually a shaving brush. And then it pulls out further, and he's just been lathering up a dude's belly, and then he slip and slides down a college dorm. <laughs> Guys on shaving. <laughs> That was weird. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. Like that was like that was weird. But the shave was nice. But but look how smooth that butter is. That would be pretty good. If it's like this ran randomness of smoothness. Yeah, it's just you know. That would be good. A guy freshly shaves, a girl, you know, like the models hold like the hand. Yeah. She just goes in for the kiss and she just falls down the stairs. Yeah. Like Or you, you see the beautiful girl and the uh like you see like some hands and, you know, like stroking her face and like some like really smooth comment. And then it, then it's it just like there's, flips and it's like a, a male body, but like there's just a Kaizen shaving for a head. It's just this for a head. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Please that was tell me smooth. that uh, when you guys go into uh, to, to, to post-production on this one, you're going to cue in that uh, porno music as you're do, given that description. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> This is a quiet moment, huh? Quiet moment. Well, well, kind of know if we were going to keep pitching some some ideas. I mean, I'll keep, I'll keep. We, we got just, a lot. We can just keep doing this. This is fun, <laughs> you know. Well, for yourself, like what you know, you have a fees. You're looking for that purchase order. What's the next move? Because it's one of those things where you're in a situation now where you, you kind of already mentioned that you're going to be cash strapped for a little bit until this PO hits, mm-hmm. until the cash hits. You're going to be cash strapped. You've already put your personal money up for the inventory. How many years in are you? Uh, we're just hit 18 months, six months to go before anyone will treat you like a human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, and I, with this, this first order, I've called a million and one banks and everyone and said, go away, kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yep. it's been calling every, every person in my contact list saying, I need 10 bucks. I need 20 bucks, whatever you can afford. Um, you're not getting equity in the company, um, and I will pay you back once I invoice this. But um, you know, it's calling anybody that I can just to, to do the fundraising with it. And um, remarkably, it looks like we'll hit you know that that uh, that goal. Um, so uh, plan of action is already set with it. You know, the, the execution will go off without a hitch. Knock on wood. Um, it absolutely gonna- will not go off without a hitch. I know. Um, but Mentally that's why prepare I, for it to have all kinds of catastrophic issues. You you are aware that, for example, for Chinese New Year, all the factories will close, right? Yep, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're all passing out red envelopes when I need them to be delivering my 
my orders. So that's not going to happen. Yep. Um, no, yeah, no, there's going to be delays. Um, you know, the port of Los Angeles still probably it's, won't yeah, have their garbage. shit squared away. Yep. yep. Um, that's every port though right now. That's literally there's every no way port. to get goods in the United States yeah. without waiting excessive times. No, the, well, they're, and, unqu- and, they're unquotable times. Like the, the people at the ports, the, if yeah. you were to ask them, well, when is boat one, two, three going to get unloaded? It actually like, would make a great movie like Smokey and the Bandit four. It's the perfect time for it. You know, like you've got to get your Kaizen razors to uh, Wisconsin in time for the holidays, you know? I've and never seen Smoking the Bandit. You, you're the worst. You're but I, I am aware worst. of, I am aware of what the, the, I am aware of the premise. How, did, how did you manage to take a Smoking the Bandit and turn into a Hallmark special type of a movie? That's what I do. That's my, <laughs> that's my specialty. That's his literary That's genius. my spe- And Brooke Shields is, is the love interest, you know? She, in order to save Christmas, you have to get the razors. I didn't to even her, know she was in the movie. To her debt. Well, I just told you. I just told you I, she's in the movie. Oh, she I, wasn't in the original. It was Sally Field. They made another one? No, we're going to make another one. Oh. But it's going to be about razors instead of beer. But Brooke Shields is I feel really like old you're not, now. I feel like you're not paying attention. Well, she well just, I don't know what you're she, talking about. The That's reason the I problem. brought up I'm Brooke to, Shields to, is because uh, she I'm just put, made a campy holiday movie <laughs> where she's trying to buy a manor in England. And Carrie Ool's. You're the word. I don't Not even know why I about. talk. I don't even know why I talk <laughs> pop culture with you. You don't know anything. Hey, have you ever heard of Star Wars? I've seen Star Wars. Uh, wow. Okay, that's one. Let's stop on a high note. With that discussion. <laughs> Albert watches nothing. Has seen nothing. He does read though. But only about business. Only about business, which are my <laughs> least favorite books. I also read. I read nonfiction. I don't like reading anything that's fake. Like Game of Thrones is fake. Why would I read that? Creativity. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but you you know you you were back to the back to the problem at hand is you know you have some challenges in front of you. You're waiting on the POs. We already know the cash flow situation is a challenge. So how are you thinking about growth, which is like what business owners have to be obsessed with? What is your what are you thinking about right now in terms of growth? Are you like looking for more customers? Are you looking for more retailers? Are you still on the road pitching? Because you're not. You're not going to put all your hopes and dreams on this one. I'm not slowing down by any means. You know, um, you know, with with APs and their their first little plan with it, um, you know, get out to these 120 stores. But that kind of represents the the major bases, uh, the 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 main PX is on those bases, um, and that's just a a small uh, fraction of where they have. And and I think that's just here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, So definitely account penetration (laughs) with uh, within APs itself and making sure that that we can get out to, you know, the shop vets and making sure that the products are are getting a full rollout within APs. Um, And then the logical next steps with it is Marine Corps exchange and Navy exchange um, and making sure that all the branches within the DOD have those products with it. Because, you know, just like you, you held up that kit earlier. Um, you know, I don't, I don't care if you're uh, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, you're going out on a deployment, that small little kit represents your entire year's worth of shaving supplies in a very low profile, you know, lower size, weight, um, you know, you can throw that in and you've got now your entire year's worth of shaving supplies and a badass looking little pouch. Um, so the, the interest will be, you know, I, I think easy to explain to you know, any of the, the, the DOD branches, uh, uh, exchange commissions. Um, so, and then from there, you know, I'd like to see what I can do to start getting into some of the, some of the, the big box, you know, civilian stores. Mm. Um, yeah, now, do you so think, do you think big box is the right place for it in the civilian world? I asked that because, you know, 80 bucks for a shaving kit, that doesn't feel like Walmart or Target. You know, it, it definitely it, feels like Target, and you know, I just walking in to the shelves of Target. I, I do have a competitor on the shelves, um, and you know, just talking, they they, they move their products very well. Mm. I know that Target has some big initi- big initiatives for inclusivity, and you know, being a better known brand would mm. would potentially help. Uh, you know, as far so, as so the you you think and, you think an eighty dollar shaving kit in Target, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, no, they've got uh, Bevel, I think is the name of the kit, and they're yeah. in excess of $80 for that okay. kit. Okay, all right. Tristan Walker's company, Bevel. Well, he guys, he sold it. See, 
See, this is you must. This is must be how I feel when uh, no, we're talking pop culture. No, because I don't yeah. expect people to know these things. Yeah. You have an assumption that people see things. Yeah, because, with you because most people see things. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so the, another idea, because this pouch is interoperable. Like, uh, so if you think about the different, because there's, there's a lot of military bag companies, mm-hmm. yep. right? So, Go Ruck makes bags. Sure. Or one of our clients, name drop, Fieldcraft Survival. They make bags. Yeah. So they're going to have, yeah, 511 Tactile. Which one did you just say? Rothko. Rothko, right? So you're talking about they'll all have, like, their own attachment systems. Most of them are Ollie-based, I guess, because, like, <laughs> military people can't get away from Ollie, yeah. Yeah. right? So, like, making this thing Molly attachable will be so that you can, it, like, and demonstrate this goes on Go Ruck, this goes on Fieldcraft, mm-hmm. this goes on all these different bag companies. Yep. That'll be a big win, I think. Throw some Velcro on it. Put it on your body armor. <laughs> right there. Say, so, but wait. I'm just imagining Range 15, the guy, the, um, the main character, or I guess Matt, any of Matt the characters Best. could do it, right? Like yeah. right before he's about to slay a bunch of zombies. He like, shaves. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get a clean shave. <laughs> it's like, is this going to be my money shot? And they're like, yeah. It's like, okay, let me freshen up. <laughs> and then he gets after it and starts killing everybody. Bam. If we could get a time machine, we could put that thing Guys on shaving. There you go. Well, maybe uh, range 16. If everyone, it ever, if it ever ha- everyone everyone's asks. been asking for range 16. I get it. I've been asked that question nonstop for five years. <laughs> hey, when are you doing range 16? Never. I don't know. Maybe someday. Well, I like how you leave it open-ended. Well, you never know. You never know. You never know. But like right now, you know, my, uh, my co-stars just, you know, went public to the tune of, you know, 1.2 billies. So they're only a piece of the 1.2 billion. No, I know, I know that they're only a piece of it, but, but, but any piece of 1.2 billion is it pretty is sick. A big piece. So I think, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think that they have a lot of work to do right now. And yeah. I think that we're pretty busy right now. And, uh, I don't know if I don't, you know, so Frank, someone's got to stroke a check someone out there. So out, I so think I do a think, big money guy mm-hmm. who loves range 15 has to step up and be like, yeah. I want to back if somebody, this movie. If somebody shows up and funds the movie, I will make it happen, you know. Well, uh, maybe maybe we've got some up and coming shaving company that's about to land per, some big hey, ass contracts hey. with Avies. That if uh, you, this is a if perfect you promotional. Fund, you fund the movie, man. Like you know, everyone in the movie will just be shaving the whole time. <laughs> like it, it'll be it'll be awkward, you know. There'll be like there'll be like a sex scene, and like in the background there'll be some dude watching and shaving. And I, you know, Looks pretty good. Dude, I, 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 I'm putting this message out to Rocco. Uh, I need you. I need you exactly for this. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Travis, it's been awesome having you on the show. Congratulations to all your success. Yeah, man. I mean, it's Super great hearing you. these big orders. I love the story. Just basically this constant, like, you're out there pitching, talking to people. Like you said, you made one call. And that got you an introduction to the lead buyers at yep. AVs. And that's gonna that pattern will continue to repeat itself that we've seen for anyone in the consumer products that ever makes it. It's like it's it's always like you're always like one person away from meeting the right person yep. that gets you the biggest break of your life. So I think it's it's awesome. Like the attitude that you have, you're probably gonna, you know. Yeah, that's, I can see why the investors wanted to put some money yeah. on your very, on, very pragmatic, a lot of hard work. You know, the risk that you take is smart risk. Um you know, it's it's good. These are all good decisions, and you're moving in the right direction. Cool to see. Yeah. What do you got to say to our audience? We have hundreds well, if, of uh, unique if listeners. You want to make shaving hundreds of less. unique listeners every week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make shaving great again. Case on Shaving Company. There you go. If you don't like the way you feel when you shave, try Case on Shaving Company. That is spelled C A I S S O N. That is C A I S S O N. Check it out. All you, the- didn't, you didn't tell them how to spell the rest of it, like how to spell shaving and company. Well, they don't want stupidity. They don't want stupid customers. Well, Nick, I, Nick, I got to ask yeah. you. You know, I'm, I'm fellow army guy here. You, you remember what a case on is, though, right? I do. Okay. Can Can I get you to sing the song? No. Sing the song. <laughs> sing the song. Is it a hard song to sing? Well, it's the it's the army song. Yeah, it's the army song. I don't know. Somebody yeah. needs to stroke a check. 
What's that? Yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to stroke a check for me to sing the army song. He also accepts Bitcoin and Shibu, so what's up? <laughs> Kason Shaving Company. All the links will be down below. Uh, if you guys want looking for a better product, better razor, Kason Shaving, give it a try. I, I, I recognize the tune. I recognize the tune. Man, that guy sucked. Whew. <laughs> that was a stinker. I mean, the business is good, but the dude is a total hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Travis is, for those listening, Travis is actually still right here. We're, you know, we're not talking trash behind his back. We're talking, we're talking trash, trash to, his, to face. his face. Yeah. yeah. But putting him on mute so we can't say nothing about it. <laughs> um, you just got to take it. Yeah. So, you know, the, I think product companies are always extremely hard. I think I always say like product companies, especially where you can't make, you actually can't make it itself. So it starts, he can make it right with the butters. He can make the butters. The he can make the, the soaps. And so that starts getting him rolling. Yeah. He needs the cash infusion. To like get the some, army. Yeah. What? It's the song. <laughs> oh. It goes rolling along, you know, that he brought up. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he goes into, involves his product lines. Yep. They're, they're obvious obviously complementary product lines, but unfortunately he can't make them on his own. He's got to get it outsourced and manufactured. I think that's the point when a gets, lot of people real. get, vi- yeah, that's, yeah. that's when shit gets real because you got to front some money typically. Yep. And, uh, you know, the people that can't get the money, they always have excuses. I always think like, always. they're always like, you know, if I could just get that money, you know, like, well, ask yourself why you can't get the money. Yeah. Why can't you get the money? You can't get the money because no one believes they're going to get it back because you're not making a good business case because you know you've made bad decisions because you're asking for a lot and returning a little that's why you can't get the money yeah exactly so yeah. that that's a common theme that you you've mentioned before like in the past people have come to you and said like if only someone would give me a chance and you're yeah. like i'm not giving you a chance yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you sound like a bum dog <laughs> i i have literally had people come to me and ask for like half a million dollars like hey can you fund a half million dollars for my idea. And like one, the idea isn't good Two, I'm not giving anybody a half million dollars. <laughs> like, like, th- like this is like, that's a giant investment. Like yeah. sometimes yeah. people think that, you know, like money is like when it comes from other people, it's like a limitless resource. And then they're mad when you're like, yeah, bro, like I'm not interested in investing at all. Like I'm happy to give you some advice, but like, I'm not. Well, the tech industry, I think, throws off people's expectations of what angel checks are because yeah, they yeah. hear about because it, it makes the news. Yeah. Oh, this guy raised three hundred million for his company. Like, oh my god, three hundred million. Yeah. Off of an idea, I was like, I promise you, it's not an idea. Yeah. I promise you, this guy's got numbers, product, customers, no, he's got, he, plan. There's things, coded. metrics. Yeah, like, yeah. There's there, stuff this happening. Is, there's a business tables. happening. You know. Oh, yeah. The uh, or like it's got user growth. Like you couldn't believe. Like I think when. Um, when Instagram raised its first round, there's there like 10 employees. They're like, well, we got this little app. There's people are taking pictures. There's like a million of them. People, are, <laughs> you got a million yeah. users? Like, yeah. how much money can I put into this? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So when people think to themselves like about fundraising, I think there's ideas are off. That's why I liked hearing Travis's story about being very pragmatic. Very, very, very pragmatic, yeah. Very this, short term. Like, this is what 20,000 can if, do. Yeah, if you give me this, I'm going to make this. If you give me that, I'm going to make this other amount. Like, it's... You know, and it all makes sense. You believe it when, it, whereas when people come and they're like, "Hey, if I can just get fifty grand, this will be a five million dollar business." Like, no, it won't. Like, there's no, you know, there's no business that works that way. You know, other than like Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm gonna make a parlay. <laughs> I'm gonna buy. I'm buy, I'm buy derivatives. Yeah, derivatives on Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, like, it just doesn't work that way. Like, you know, things cost money. It, it, it you know, and so. There, you know, again, I go back to I've I've now heard a lot of case competitions, business showers, whatever. When people come in and they're like, "If I can get twenty grand, I'll turn this into a you know a, a five million dollar company, a ten million dollar company. That's all I need." And and like you're telling people that have all already gone through the grind of trying to grow a business, and it's never what you need. You know, like you know, I I, I use this example all the time. In the early days when Ranger Up needed money. I could I could cut a check from my other job my you know my real job at the time for ten grand because like I made money it was like oh you know this sucks but you know I'll cut a check for ten grand bought the inventory you know fast forward a few years when we needed half a million a million dollars of inventory that there's no check coming for that like we got to figure it out like <laughs> you got to find a way to do it 
you know, whether that's, you know, loans or investors or, you know, restructuring or, you know, whatever it is, like anybody that's grown a business from zero to seven, eight figures has had to figure something out, has had to figure that, how do I get the cash out? So when somebody tells me, if you give me 20 grand, I'm going to turn that into a hundred grand. Like that is so much more believable than the other thing, because I've already done it and I know how painful it is and I know the challenges and so does any investor that actually built something that wasn't just born rich. Yeah. Or you're, or the only way you'll get a number greater than that, right? Like 50 for 500 is really, you just have stratospheric growth. Yeah. It's, and, you, it's, and you just, and people like, I can monetize that. Then, you, there, then there, you'll meet a different type of person. Yeah. Where people there's like, no real product. It's, it's a, it's code or yeah. it's something that like, once you build it, it's done. And then you just have to scale it. It's infinitely, it's infinitely scalable. That's right. Yeah. Like the, uh, have you, the uh like it's typically in software it's all it's usually always in software yep. nothing with hard costs anything with hard costs really hard to scale yeah, super if, fast if it's got a marginal it's just, it's cost just, then you've got to make it yeah, yeah it's it's just it's just a tough game but yeah this is case on shaving for those of you guys have yep. mentioned before all the links are below we had travis on we were dogging on him but no, the uh <laughs> the the product does have a weighty feel uh, feels yeah, high ev quality everything feels everything in here feels like a quality product Looking forward to success. Yeah. Till next week. Till next week. Merry Christmas.